the SMB3 POSIX extensions. They've been under development for like about 12 years now is when the working group started. Um, and um, they're just finally starting to uh, be accepted in uh, various servers and, and client implementations. And we, um, uh, and uh, we're nearly finished with the implementation in Samba as well. Uh, this is uh, this talk is specifically about the uh, the specification and and, and details about how it how it works. Um, so, kind of the objectives of the SMB3 POSIX extensions um, is to fill the void caused by the deprecation of SMB1. So, SMB1, of course, has um, Unix extensions that were used fairly hev heavily by by some. Um, uh, so, uh, some individuals and um, and removing SMB1 from the picture uh, it causes that uh, them to not have a, anything to fall back on. Um, and so uh, it's important that we provide the extensions to SMB3. Um, one of the main targets in creating these extensions was to make it far more simple than the SMB1 extensions. SMB1 had uh, many different configurable options and and set info and query commands and and it was it was kind of a mess because it was everything was just kind of kludged together as they went along and so with the smb3 extensions there was a lot of detail and um, intention gone into the design of it before um, it was ever implemented <clears throat> excuse me if you'd like to see the work in progress specification, you can download it here. I'll have this QR code in the corner here and on the slides you can download as well. Um, uh, just, uh, just make it easy to download. Um, so that's where you can re you can get the the specification. Um, that's uh, the basis of the talk. So first, I'll I'll, I'll briefly go over some of the details of the SMB1 Unix extensions and then compare them with SMB3. Uh, I, I never implemented SMB1. That was before my time, so I don't understand all the details, but I but these are the, the specifics from the, the documentation that was on the Samba wiki. So to uh, negotiate um, SMB1 uh, Unix extensions, you had uh, this list of capabilities that you could request. Uh, and um, the different clients and servers could support different capabilities. You could um, specify whether you supported uh, Spednego, for example, or whether you must provide Spednego. And then um, there's all these different capabilities that um, you could or couldn't uh, negotiate during the um, negotiation of the of the connection. In SMB3 Unix extensions, it's much more straightforward. You either have it all or you don't. Uh, in SMB2 Plus, you can provide what's called a context type, or, or, or I'm sorry, a, a negotiate context when you do your nego negotiation. Um, and it, it's a, the, the context is a kind of an appendage to the end of the packet. And so we added this one co uh, context type um, that says that POSIX extensions are available. And if you look at the details of the context, it just has this POSIX tag that we throw in there. And it uh, it's supposed to represent the, the version of the context. And right now there's only one version. There's just this one version that says you support everything. I don't know if there will be future versions, but um, uh, we'll see. Now the negotiate context, <clears throat> um, when it's when you respond to a negotiate, um, the the server or the uh, the server will respond with the same exact uh, negotiate context. It'll, it'll actually be identical. I'll show you that on this other page. So you can see here is a packet from uh, when you're requesting uh, POSIX capabilities, and you can see here it's just another one of uh, several. Negotiate context, for example, you've got encryption and signing capabilities that you can negotiate. Well, you can add on this POSIX tag in a, in the, in a final one there. And then the reply is, is exactly the same. It's identical. It looks just like the request. 
so like I said, the, the goal is to be very simple and straightforward. And, and, and so you, if you send this packet, uh, this uh, context in your re uh, negotiate request, uh, and you get the same pack uh, uh, context in response, then it's then all of it's supported. Um, so let's look at file creation in SMB one. It was kind of a convoluted mess. Uh, you had to send a set info request, and with a specific open uh, POSIX open path in the uh, type as the set info, which is really bizarre. <laughs> and um, and then you could set the various. Uh, you, you could set a, uh, the open flags and, and so on. But it was kind of a weird way of opening a file to send a set info request. In SMB3, for, uh, it, instead, you um, you submit a create context, uh, create POSIX context. So like the negotiate context on a, on a create object, you can also specify a create context. Uh, the create context looks like this. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you use the create context type, which was uh, with this tag. It's the same tag that the negotiate uses. And um, and then in, within the, the context, uh, you just specify the permissions that you're requesting. Um, one of the uh, one of the major simplifications in um, uh, in SMB3 POSIX extensions was that uh, you're, you're basically, you, you do a normal open request, a normal create, and then you append this, this piece onto the end of it. And so, it, so for example, in SMB1, you had that special set info um, hokey request. Well, this one is, is very, uh, it relies heavily on the, the standard SMB2 uh, specification. Uh, so the new create context, this is the response from the server, and it contains um, uh, this, a couple of simple things that you, you need, the number of links, the, a reparse tag, POSIX permissions, and then the SID and group. One important difference between SMB1 and SMB3 is that in SMB1, uh, the, the server would try to resolve a UID and GID and respond with the UID and GID for the of the owner and the group or the owner and group for the on the file. In SMB three, we just respond with the SIDs, uh, and then it's the client's responsibility to convert those SIDs to um, UID and GID. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out in the request. Uh, in the create context request is when you're creating a context, if you're opening a file, so you can see the disposition here, the SMB2 disposition is, um, if, is to just open the file, then you're required to set the permissions, the POSIX permissions to zero because you're, cre um, or you should set it to zero because you're opening an existing file. In contrast, when you are opening a new file or creating a file, then you can set the POSIX permissions. And then for uh, query info, in SMB1, we had all of these uh, query info uh, requests. Um, you could uh, do a, base, a Unix basic, Unix link, POSIX ACL, et cetera, POSIX lock, all of these different query uh, commands. In contrast, in SMB3, there is one single POSIX information request. Um, it's very, uh, very simple and has just the basics that are necessary. Um, and uh, one important note, I'll go back, oops. One important note is that the, uh, the new file information, uh, pos uh, file POSIX information class is read only. Uh, uh, there is no writing with the uh, with the with this. It's it's query only. Um, so it's a query, and that's the there's the query level, and here's an example of that. Well, uh, here here's what it looks like. So um, it's this is kind of small, so it's hard to see. So I'm going to back up the. 
it comes with um, the file name, creation time, access time, modification time, etc. But the important ones are the reparse tag, the POSIX permissions, and the owner and group SIDS. And here's what a response looks like, um, a query info POSIX response. As you can see, it, it has those critical bits, but it also uh, provides some of the basics that you would get in a uh, standard query info request. And the the uh, the um, the way this is designed is intentionally we're not uh, providing a set info request like we did before, because everything that you can set. Um, in this in this query, you could also set some other way using standard um, uh, SMB2 calls. And so there's no reason to be setting it, providing special uh, uh, set info requests. Now I'm going to do a simple demo. And so let me switch and share my screen. I've got a server running. Let's see here. Right there. I've got a server running in one window over here. I've started up and uh, it's run. I, I've created a a Docker container that you can um, you can download yourself if you want to test it out. Uh, and then I'm going to run a client, a simple client, and connect to that server. So I've created just this connection object. There aren't any client um, uh, SMB client. Uh, 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 the SMB client for Samba hasn't. It doesn't have the extensions implemented yet. It's only in the back end. So I, I'm using the the uh, POSIX code for that. Or I'm sorry, the Python code for that. So I can do a list on the top directory. I've got one file in here already. <clears throat> I want to do a list. Now the info level, if you remember, is 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 hex 64 or 100. And I'm going to enable POSIX extensions here. So there's a file there. I'm going to create a new file. So I forgot to <laughs> grab a reference to it. But anyway, I'll reopen that. I'm going to write some, some junk to it. And then read from it. And then I'll close it. I actually want to, I'm going to close, uh, stop this. And then I'm going to restart it, and I'm going to, in another window, I'm going to capture uh, capture network traffic, and then we're going to um, take a look at the network traffic from that. So I'm capturing traffic on on the server now. now. I'm going to let's go ahead and create another file. Do some do a simple write and then a read. And let's list that out the the network capture. 
um, is a little slow catching packets, so I'm going to list it a couple of times. You can see that the response has the POSIX permissions in there. Okay. I'm going to close that connection, and then I'm going to open up the Wireshark output. I'm going to change my screen sharing. Okay, you should now be able to see my Wireshark capture. And let's take a look at the, um, the different components. So if you remember, there's a negotiate context here in my request from the client, which has that, that special tag in there. And then we have a negotiate response that mirrors the server saying that it does support POSIX extensions. And then you don't have to do anything else until you do a create. Or a, or a query. One interesting thing is that you don't have to always open as a, a, a file with POSIX extensions or list with POSIX extensions. You can do a, a, a your typical create or list and ignore that you've opened it with the POSIX capabilities. So here's our open. Actually, it's a create. And we've included our, our POSIX bits. And then a write is just a typical write. You don't do anything different. And then now we're going to open the directory here with POSIX perm zero because it's an open. And then it returns the POSIX bits with the owner and group SID, as well as um, POSIX perms on the directory, etc. And then we do a find uh, uh, SMB2 find in, POSIX info request, which looks like this. And then the response lists all of the files using the POSIX info. One thing uh, to point out, I'm going to collapse these. We can get the SIDs for the for all of the files except for dot dot. Um, we we explicitly zero that out, as well as the inode and file ID, because these, um, because uh, that's not within the share. And then here's our test one, test two, and then the file we just created, test three. And like I said, I've got um, a, a Docker container that you can pull down. Uh, using this command here, and you can run that server that I set up. I also have a little client on uh, in that same project, that same Docker project that you can pull from, and you can test it out with my little Python client that I set up. And that's it. Any questions? How does it play with App Armor um, and SE Linux? Well, it's um, not going to work any differently than a, your typical Samba server. Um, it, it, it's not really any different. We're just adding extra packets. Well, extra data in the packets. Um, but otherwise, it's um, essentially the same. Like I said, the point of the SMB3 POSIX extensions is to do the bare minimum. It just tacks on a few extra bits to um, the existing protocol. Um, it's already, uh, the KSMBD, actually, oh, I'll, I'll reread these, sorry. Um, uh, David Dusseldorf asks, is anyone working on KSMBD support? And actually, yes. Um, uh, the I can't remember his name who developed KSMBD. He actually added um, POSIX support already. It's in KSMBD. Uh, so, so yeah, you can test out um, test it out there already. Uh, we tested it at um, at SDC 
last month, and it appears to be working. It's also, I should point out the, so maybe I'll mention kind of some of the clients and servers. Um, the the um, POSIX extensions are, are nearly supported in Samba. They should be in 4.18. Namj, thank you, Paulo. That's who I was thinking of. Namj added that. So the POSIX ex extensions will soon be in Samba. Um, uh, Volker Lendek, uh, his, he's actually added uh, some pre preliminary support, and we're working on adding some more. Um, and then KSMBD is a server that that supports um, the POSIX extensions. There, uh, there's a proprietary server. Uh, I can't remember the name of it now, but there is a proprietary solution that offers support for it, and we were testing that. Um, at SDC also, and then the Sys kernel module supports the um, the extensions. So, so we we now have a a working several working clients and servers that support the POSIX extensions. I don't understand your question, David. Uh, any word on Windows subsystem for Linux, meaning adding uh, the the POSIX extensions in the Windows subsystem for Linux? I assume you mean. Yeah, I haven't talked to anybody at, at Microsoft about that. Um, uh, is it using SIFSKO, uh, the kernel module in within Windows subsystem? If it is, and I, I assume that it would have the client already. Um, I would uh, I actually have no idea, David, um, whether they use SIFSKO or not. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Um, but I, I guess it wouldn't matter because if it's if it's communicating with like a local server in on the Windows client, then I mean it's not going to support. Well, I guess you, you'd you'd want it to be able to talk to. Linux servers, not necessarily Windows servers. Okay, Paolo says that SysKO does support some specific reparse tags that WSL exposes. So they must be using it. <clears throat> and I guess the other big one is um, Azure. So whether the Windows files um, implementation would have any interest in it. Yeah, I don't know about Azure. I guess what would be the use case in a Windows subsystem for for Linux um, beyond just being able to connect to a Linux server from your Windows client, I guess, with POSIX extension support? So I guess maybe you would want to do, say, a loopback mount from the WSL client to the Windows server and then right. speak, um, speak POSIX extensions there. Look, I don't, I don't know. I'm just sort of curious. I'm pretty sure Windows has not implemented the POSIX extensions though. And mm. I'm not sure that they will. I mean, maybe if it's if it benefits them, maybe we could convince them to do it. <laughs> but yeah, as far as I know, I could test it out with the latest, um, their latest server. But um, I don't think they, they've made any effort to support these.